Hello, welcome on Skin to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a very pleasant Sunday stuff and things. I'm a little under the weather, but we're going to get to that later. First, we have things to talk about, including upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to on Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things Plays. We will also be talking about some more exciting financial news. It just keeps coming on this channel. It's amazing. We also will be getting into Ask Stuff and Things. We have one question, I think, but then some really good feedback from last week's videos. And to end the episode, we're going to do something kind of weird here. We're going to find out if I have COVID. So stay tuned. That's right. I've been feeling a little bit under the weather for the last week. And before you start freaking out um, about me being irresponsible, I was working last week. But when I started feeling sick, it wasn't I wasn't exhibiting the kind of symptoms that you would equate to COVID-19. It was more of a stomach kind of thing. And there wasn't really anything going on with re the respiratory uh, issues that people have with COVID normally. I didn't have a fever. I just had a very, uh, very rough stomach going on. And then it wasn't until yesterday when I was at work and I just started feeling really tired and maybe slightly short of breath and kind of brain foggy. And then I started thinking, hmm, maybe I actually have COVID. So I went home early. And now today we do have a couple of these at home COVID tests that you can get. Um, I think you can order these through the US post office if you are in the United States. And we got a few of these. I think there are two tests in each box. And so at the end of the episode, I'm going to take one of these tests because I'm supposed to be getting together with family this weekend. And if I do actually have COVID, I'm not going to do that, obviously. So stay tuned until the end. This will be a first on Stuff and Things. I will be administ administering <laughs> an actual medical test to myself. Uh, this should be interesting. But now, Upcoming videos, you can look forward to the GLP's full review of Meridian. The, mer the re see, brain fog, brain fog. The review, the full review of GLP's Meridian coming up this Wednesday on Stuff and Things. We will have on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Stuff and Things Plays, the Deathloop series continuing. This game is getting really exciting and really cool, and I hope you guys are checking it out. I know it's not Kevin the Kurt, but it's still really fun and really cool. And then I think not this coming Wednesday, but the Wednesday after I'm going to do a gerbil update. People have been asking me about the little guys and I want to show you how they're doing and what I've been doing with them. So look forward to all those videos, please. So last week I brought you some exciting financial news, some information that was just, just written out on my comment section for last week's Sunday stuff and things or the week before sun that last week's Sunday stuff and things. And just amazingly, out of nowhere, on last week's video in the comments section, on the video where I was discussing the former amazing financial news, we got some new amazing financial news. Let me read it to you now. <clears throat> this is from Mark Brave. He started out the comment section. Oh, I forgot. Exciting financial news requires financial planner glasses. Here we go. Man, these are so dirty. I cannot see anything out of them whatsoever. Mark Brave says, nice video, very engaged from beginning to end. Nevertheless, business and investment are the easiest way to make money, irrespective of which party make it to the Oval Office. Brenda Nichols chimes in. You're right. Trading now should be in every wise individual's list. In some months' time, you will be ecstatic with the decision you made today. Christopher D. Osborne. Investing in cryptocurrency is one of the best ways of making monies. Ralph Wan. Stocks are goods, but crypto is more profitable. Walter Keith. I wanted to trade crypto, but got discouraged by the fluctuations in price. Don't worry, Walter, because Evan Sean chimes in. That won't bother you if you trade with a professional like... No, it's not Mr. Philip Hutchinson. It's Mr. Stuart Wesley. Karen D. Christopher. I heard that his strategies are really good. Jordan Alice Julia. 
Yeah, my first investment with Mr. Stuart Wesley earned me profit of over $25,530 U.S. dollar. And ever since then, he has been delivering. David C. Vick, he has really made a good name for himself. Dennis Tyler, I got Sir Stuart Wesley info. How good is he? <laughs> Sir Stuart. Roberto Stephen, expert Stuart has been managing my trade for months and I keep making, making profit every week. I made 9,000 last week. Nicholas Raymond, I know him but I don't have time for trading. He manages my account and has made a lot of profit for me. I can now boost I made 15,400 weekly. Philip Logan, he's really amazing with amazing skill. He changed my 0.1 Bitcoin to 2.1 Bitcoin. Marion Clare, how do I start trading with Mr. Stewart, please? Liam Noah gives Mr. Stewart's number. That's his WhatsApp info. Marion Clare, thanks so much. I think this is really helpful placing my trade with expert Stewart. Peter Stev, my first investment with Mr. Stuart Wesley gave me the assurance that have made me invest without fear of losing. I got four of my friends involved with him already. Jessica Michael, I'm from the UK and my colleagues gave him a try and it has been good returns of our investment. Thanks, Mr. Stuart Wesley. That sounds familiar. Graham Patrick, I've got 12th winning thanks to Mr. Stuart Wesley. He's really my best. I've made 16,400 pounds in 18 days working with him. Vera Hoimang, his success stories is everywhere in Los Angeles. Connor Seth, I lost about 7,000 trading in stock market before I was linked to Mr. Stuart Wesley. And believe me, he helped me recover the 26,000 and an extra 14,000 in the space of a week and four days. Mr. Stuart Wesley, first we got hooked up with Mr. Philip Hutchinson, and now Mr. Stuart Wesley just falls from the heavens into our laps. I don't know why we've been so lucky, but I'm very thankful for this amazing financial advice. All right, gang, it is time for your feedback and questions in hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday stuff and things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I will do my best to answer you in the next Sunday stuff and things. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can contact me via Patreon. And if you would like to leave a question in YouTube comments on my videos, not other people's videos, my videos, I will try to go through those comments and answer your questions on the next Sunday Stuff and Things. First, via YouTube, we have a question from, it's going to be a little tough for me here. It's SRPSKO. Sripsko? Drustvo? <laughs> Lubategya Lul. Uh, this person is Serbian, so I know I just completely butchered that name, but they say, Hi Bradley, my name is Goran, and I am admin at the Serbian Pipe Lover Society YouTube channel. There are about 60 of us in our society, and we nurture a love for pipes and pipe teas here in Serbia. That is why the channel is in Serbian language. I just want to greet you and ask you to follow our channel and mention us sometime on, y on YTPC. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best with your magnificent channel, Goran Stankovic. Or Stankovic. Uh, thank you, Goran, and as you could just see, I mentioned your channel. Good luck to you. It's cool that there are Serbians watching stuff and things. That's really cool. Now we have some feedback. So that was the only, it wasn't even really a question. I guess he was asking if I could, if I could mention his channel. So we need more questions coming in. Keep them coming in, gang. But now we have feedback from last week's videos. Um, Dorian Dorian Philotheters, Philotheters mentions uh, when we talked about the amazing financial news last week. That's the huge financial news. Ha! I would have you know that I have just become the sole financial beneficiary of a Nigerian prince. All I have to do in order to claim my legacy is to email His Highness all my personal and banking information, including passwords. Sounds reasonable. I believe congratulations are in order. After this, maybe I'll be able to procure copious supplies of Germains and Balkan Sobrani teas. Well, congratulations, Dorian. That's very good news indeed. Justin Klein mentions, I'm so happy from Philip Hutchinson. He money so much. Yes, he does. Uh, and Clash. Uh, I was playing a little bit of Clash. Uh, I think it was Complete Control from their first album. That guitar sounds great. <sighs> People are sawing again. Um, is that coming through the Vox or the computer? So I was playing my newish, new Gibson Les Paul Special with two P90s, and he was asking if I was playing it through my amp. No, I wasn't playing it through my amp. I had it 
from my guitar going into my pedal board, from the pedal board into the tiny little Fender Mustang Micro, which is a little headphone amp, and then from there into my computer. Next, from Lone Wolf Piper. The Clash. Awesome intro, Bradley. My thoughts on the strokes are exactly the same. Someday is definitely their best song and one I never get tired of. Although all their albums are fantastic, I tend to agree with their debut being the best. Joe. Yes, Joe. You are correct. Next, from Scott Taylor. They say, sounds great to me. I can hear a big difference now versus then and confidence. Oh, so this is on the nine-month guitar challenge. It was the final check-in video, and I was basically asking, have I improved? Does it seem as though I'm imp I've improved? And it's always kind of embarrassing posting those videos, or it had been kind of embarrassing posting those videos, because in my mind, I am not a good guitar player, and I'm trying to become a better guitar player. And from the very beginning, I decided I needed to just be completely transparent. I wasn't going to play something a hundred times and take the best take. I was just going to show you how I can play. And <clears throat> so it's always been a little... There's been a little bit a little bit of apprehension there when I've been posting those videos. And so in that last video, I was just like, you know, you saw how I was at the beginning of the nine months. Here we are at the end. Does it seem as though I've improved? So Scott Taylor says, sounds great to me. I can hear a big difference now versus then, and confidence probably has a lot to do with it. I think more pra practice will take you to the next level, and if you can play with others in a band or just dinking around, that would also push you to the next level. Thank you for the feedback, Scott, and I do agree. I really want to try to play with other people. It's been tough lately, obviously, but hopefully that will change in the coming year. Next from Groovin Piper. Groovin says, I'm a drummer first and foremost, but I love guitar and bass. <clears throat> you sound great, man. Great sense of rhythm, too. I was playing air drums through your solo. Keep it up, buddy. Longtime follower of both of your channels. I know you can sing, too, so I'm looking forward to following your journey. Let me know when you need a drummer. Thank you, Groovin Piper. Um, I don't know that I sound great, but thank you. I am really wanting to try to record some new songs this year. So that's something that we will probably be talking about on the channel a little bit. And if I get anything that I don't think is horrible, I might show it to you guys on Stuff and Things, or I don't know exactly how I would do that, or if I would just have a separate video, like, look, here is a song I wrote and recorded. We'll see, but stay tuned this year. I think you'll be seeing some of that showing up on the channel. And now from Colin Kelly, who has been a longtime viewer and a great guy. Uh, Colin says, these breakthroughs or those breakthroughs are amazing. Only up to four chords a month in. So Colin just started learning guitar himself, which is really cool. But I often feel like I'm in a calculus class. So I start to think about when I start to think about keys and scales and the like. Your guitar sounds fantastic. So Colin, thank you for writing in. And it's one thing to think about you know, when you first start playing guitar, and it's been so long for me, and obviously, if you guys have been following along with the nine month guitar challenge, you'll know that I, I started when I was 15. And I learned some of those basic chords and bar chords and stuff. And then I didn't really do anything for years. Um, so it's only been in the last year that I've really been plugging away and trying to get better. But it's hard to remember what it was like when you were first starting out and trying to contort your fingers into these shapes and just how it felt, how raw your fingers would get and everything. So I know, Colin, that the first few months are the worst and they're the toughest. And so many people buy guitars and then they just drop it after a couple months because they're like, this is impossible. This sucks. But if you can get through those first months, I think you'll really see a lot of progress. And that's the cool thing about guitar is that if you put the effort in the first after a couple months, you can learn chords and start playing songs. It'll be at a basic level, but you can really see that progress um, in those first few months. So just keep plugging away, and it's really cool that you're learning. Um, and gang, we're going to do it a little different. Since we want to take the COVID test at the end of the episode, um, we're going to do the very best part of the show right now, and that is where I thank our Patreon supporters. It's hard for me to express how much I appreciate you guys supporting me on Patreon. It really means a lot, and uh, it has been such a huge help just throughout all the last couple years, especially having that little bit of extra income. I, I put in a lot of effort into this, and I know it may not always seem like that, but I really do, and having you guys supporting me is just really cool. I don't know if I'm 
getting weirdly emotional because I don't feel well right now. But anyway, just know that it is super, super appreciated. And if any of you would like to support the channels, there is a link to our Patreon in the description box below. But every week, we like to thank those who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Glenn, Jason Buckner, Gloria Phillips, Ryan McFadden, Matt Marino, MD of the North, and our newest 25 and up shout out supporter, Kyle. And of course, we can't forget the maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month. People like Peter Straub, Bob McGee, David Gaudreau, and Ashes of the Phoenix. Thank you all so much for your support. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and commenting and liking these videos because all of that helps a lot too. Whew. It's weird when talking can make you tired. All right, gang, it's time for the moment of truth. Do I have COVID-19? And just to talk about this a little bit more, I'm okay, don't worry, any of you, regardless of what these results may be, um, you know, I've had plenty of flus that are much worse than this. I've had colds that have been worse than how I feel now. So this, is, this isn't anything dire. This isn't the end of the world. I just want to check and see because I don't want to expose family members to this if I do actually have COVID. So we have one of these self-test or these COVID tests, self-test at home results in 15 minutes. And like I said, if you go to, I think it's just the post office website in the US, you can get these sent to you. They sent us two of these boxes. There are two tests in each of these boxes. And if we look at this, we have directions here. Let's see. Step by step, prepare materials. You need your COVID test card and pouch, which I've got here. You need either one pre-filled tube or a, an empty tube and solution tube, which I think is what I've got right here. Then you need your cotton swab, which I've got right here. So you start out by, please look carefully, there are two edges. Open the package containing the tubes. <clears throat> oh. Okay, so there's one there. Here's this, and here's this. So, this is my solution. Uh, please look carefully, there are two edges. If we look at this, there are two edges. There's one there and one there. So I have to fill this with the solution. Squeeze the sealed solution completely into the empty tube. Please confirm the liquid level uh, with or above edge two. Please confirm the, the liquid level with or above edge two. Then go to step two, collect sample. Okay. So we have our little solution thing here. We also have this thing here. Let's make sure that it's all down to the bottom. I'm going to open this now. I think I just twist this off. Maybe I need some scissors. I don't want to squeeze any of this out. Okay, that's off. Here's my tube. We are putting into testing thingy. And it would appear that I am, well, I'm not quite up to that edge here. Let's make sure we get it all in there. Okay, I think we're good there. Let's put this aside. I'm going to put this little cap on for now. Okay, there is our little solution bottle ready. Now, collect sample. Remove the swab from its package, being careful not to touch the tip Tip of the swab. Please keep the swab package for later use. Gently insert the, insert the entire absorbent tip of the swab into your nostril. Okay. Firmly and slowly brush against the insides of nostril in a circular motion against the nasal wall at least five times. Take at least 15 seconds to collect the specimen and be sure to collect any nasal drainage on the swab. 
Using the same swab, repeat the same sample collection procedure for the other nostril. Be sure to brush both nostrils with the same swab. Okay, then you process the sample. Tap the tube vertically on the table and twist the large orange cap to open the tube. Insert the swab into the tube, touching the bottom of the tube with the swab tip and stir at least 15 times. All right, so let's collect the sample here. How do we open this? Open here. It's like a Band-Aid. Okay, here's our swab. <clears throat> so I'm going to slowly brush the inside of each nostril five times. Here we go. Hopefully nothing horrible is going to come out. Get the nasal drainage. Okay, next nostril. Oh, it's going to make me sneeze. Okay, now we take this tube here, we tap it. Then we open the top. I'm doing here. We insert swab all the way to the bottom, like so, and then we stir 15 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Look at the possible from the swab. Oh, I'm supposed to express get liquid from swab. Okay, there we go. And then screw the large orange cap. Okay, hopefully we've got enough in there. Okay, put the swab back into the package, safely dispose of the swab and the package. This could be a biohazard here, gang, so we're going to make sure that we put this back in the package and we will dispose of this later. Okay, now, screw back the large orange cap, put the swab back, blah, 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 we got all that, add sample. So now we have to open up our test card, which we have here. What are we doing on time, by the way? I'm not sure. Here is our test card. So it looks like there is a C and a T and you put drops, you put some drops here, and then there's a little thing here where there will be a line that shows up, I guess. So it shows here, twist open the small white cap of the tube, add three drops of sample to the sample port of the COVID-19 test. Uh, screw back the small white cap, three drops. Wait 15 minutes, read results. So if you have a line on the C and the T, we have there, that means you have COVID. If you only have a line on the C, it means you do not have COVID. And apparently these tests give a lot of false negatives, but not false positives very often. So if it shows that I have COVID, I probably have COVID. If it doesn't show I have COVID, it doesn't necessarily mean that I don't have COVID. So we are unscrewing the top and we are going to place three drops in this. Here we go. One, two, three. That's three drops. All right, gang, now we just have to wait for 15 minutes.
All right, gang, the 15 minutes is up. Let's take a look. Do I have SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, or not? Oh my God. I do not have COVID-19, it would appear, <coughs> at least according to this test right now. You know, there are other illnesses that still circulate in the world besides COVID-19. I probably just have a cold or a mild flu or something like that. Now, apparently these tests can give out false negatives um, more often than they can give out false positives. But as you saw there, there is a line on the C, but not a line on the T, which according to this test means that I don't have COVID. So there you go. I can go back to shaking hands, slapping backs, and kissing babies like I usually do. And gang, with that little bit of news, it's time to end. Until next time, until we meet again, thank you so much for watching. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.